guys, welcome to another episode of The Cat Lady. My name is Andrea, also known as The Cat Lady. That's 2-T-C-A-T-T, -T -T, which stands for Craft All The Things. I am a fiber-related channel that does primarily knitting, spinning, some sewing. Um, I have a circular sock machine. I do a lot of, did I say crochet? I don't remember now. <laughs> this is the second time I've recorded the intro because I was interrupted by my children. I reside in Michigan with my husband, two kids, two new kittens, Calvin and Hobbs, and this is just the hodgepodge of my channel. I do a lot of like crafty stuff, but I also put in other random things that just showcase my weird and wacky life. So if you like what you see, please like and subscribe to the channel and comment below with anything else you'd like to see. Uh, you can find me on social media as the cat lady on Instagram, Facebook. I have a Discord server. I use Ravelry. Uh, all my projects that I do work on knitting crochet wise are on Ravelry. I try to keep everything updated there. If you have any questions, just feel free to comment on the video or you can send me an email to thecatladydesigns at gmail.com or craftycatlady at gmail.com. Everything is linked down below. Everything I talk about is linked down below. All the projects I am wearing or whatever, typically linked down below. But again, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I love to chat with you guys and, and interact. So with that, uh, I, it is, I, oh, I record snippets throughout the week and then post on Friday. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, oh my God. It's Tuesday, it's already three o'clock in the afternoon. I usually I prefer to record earlier in the mornings, but the day is just like every day, it just gets away from, uh, gets away from me. So what have I been working on? So I finally, finally finished the dispersed shawl that you saw last week and I still need to get some like nice pictures of it. It's currently sitting on my little mannequin over here. So I'm ideally going to somehow get myself to take pictures of that this week and I will show you when those are done. Um, I obviously want to get them to the designer as well because it was a test um, but I did pull out my lotus skirt so I've been working on the lotus skirt for quite some time. I'm still concerned about the length a little bit. Uh, I will put in a video of the skirt because it's hanging very nicely on my display mannequin right now and I want it to hit the floor. The mannequin's about my height. It's kind of set to where I want it where it's supposed to represent me. I want it to be a long flowy skirt. Um, it is, I think, too high up on the mannequin right now. So I think it needs to be moved down a little bit. So I do need to take it off and put it on myself again, but I might need to do an extra repeat of the current section I'm in. So basically there was like these mismatch, the mismatch petals that you see that I'm on the last one. And I don't, and then you just make it longer. Basically the patterns like just continue adding rows until it's long enough. Well, I don't want the last petal to be like this long. So I think I might alternate and add another petal or two and then do the last part. So the, the last petal is only like this long. So, but I worked a lot on that. Um, I will, in the, I'm point at, if you saw in the video that I put in there, I haven't taken it yet, but I will point at where I was at and where I'm at. So you can see, see the progress. It's easier than trying to like manhandle it. Cause it is big, it is big. I do, th I feel like I made it too wide um, you're supposed to like, it's really hard because like the fabric does kind of stretch and give as you work it. So, you know, when you do your chain, I did the chain around my heavy, uh, widest part of my bottom and yeah, it was fine going forward, but as it started to grow and get lacy, it's, it's substantially larger. Um, so in my waist, there is a big difference between my waist and my backside. So it is, there's a lot, it's big, but that also means it's flowier so it'll twirl a little more so I guess it, it'll be fine I think it'll be fine I'm just very nervous this pattern's been definitely a challenge uh it's not very very big beginner friendly so but I took a break from the actual uh crocheting of the pattern and started working I'm right now I have a temporary cord eye cord that I'm using as the waist as the belt part in like just it was a, a different project um, that I was doing an eye cord for. So I started the actual eye cord so that I can actually weave it in and out of the skirt top the way it's supposed to be. Cause right now it's really just weirdly in there. I'm tangled here. Okay, whatever, I'm tangled, my end is tangled, but so I've gotten some eye cord done. I'm using the Cordsmith, which is a very nifty tool. I sat on the treadmill and did some of this. I mean, this was like, this took me no time at all to work on this. Uh, so I just need to crank out. I'm really actually not, not much left. So let's see, I'm about the length it needs to be right now. And then I, of course I need the ends 
to tie it in a bow. So I'm very close. So next time I sit down and work on this, I will crank it, crank it out and be done. I don't know if she puts a size, probably not. Um, so I'll have to see how long I'm supposed to make this, but that's what I've been working on. <sighs> I'm making this out of Pima cotton, Lion Brand Pima cotton, uh, in the stone color. Uh, the pattern calls for using multiple different needle sizes. I wound up, I did like, I did a small size for the first part and then just switched to an H and have been using an H the whole way because it was just the more comfortable size hook for the yarn and I just went with it. Uh, I packed my Magic Carp yarn to actually work on some of the pieces for the hats but never touched them so I have not done that. <sighs> Is there anything else I've done? I think that's it. I haven't worked on anything else. Um, I'm looking at my granny fanny that I would love to finish but I have not pulled out the iron to iron the fabric and figure that out again so like I have all these projects I'm waiting so I really want to focus on the lotus skirt so I probably will work on that more the kids are going to camp next week uh, so excited I get a week to myself so it's gonna be nice and quiet and I get to just relax hopefully a little bit and maybe focus on my my do a true knit knitting machine, crank out some of my skirt. Um, but I also have a zillion doctor's appointments that I scheduled for next week too. So, but that, that, they should be quick. So, um, but that's it for today. I will hopefully be able to update you more this week. I'll try to get some kitty footage this week because I haven't been uh, showing off the kitties as much. So I will try to snip, uh, get some kitty videos to put in or post as shorts and stuff. So. That's all I got for today. I will catch you on the next clip. Hey guys, it's Friday and yeah, it's been a week again. That's how I say that all the time, don't I? But it, it's been a week. Uh, David is playing piano downstairs. So you might hear a little bit of that in the background. He has a friend over and he's just tooling around. So hopefully that doesn't get too distracting, but it's already two o'clock in the afternoon and I'd like to like get things going. So lots of good things today. Well, first of all, I'm wearing my, I've ste finally steamed these tassels because they were pretty wonky. Um, this is another Amba O'Brien tassel necklace variation. So I have the one that's a big long necklace that I can either wear double or single. I've worn a lot and this one's more of like the lanyard, what is it called? Lariat style. So it's just a big long string or a cord with the two tassels on the end so I can loop it through. So this is like a big loop. And it is looped in there. Uh, that was made with my cordsmith. Like I mentioned before, I was working on the uh, lotus skirt I-cord belt, uh, which is done. The belt is done, not the skirt. The lotus skirt belt is done, but I did work on it some more and I did try it on and I am feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I'm going to put in this quick video of me wearing it. Looks ridiculous because I have like my clothes on underneath it, but I'll put that in real quick. Okay, so this isn't the best uh, look, but figured I'm doing a fit check here on the lotus skirt. Um, so, like probably about belly button, and then the lotus top will essentially probably come to like here. Uh, so here we are. Try not to trip over my hair. So I feel so I'm definitely going to do another full petal. And then, and then keep going. Uh, I feel like we're doing pretty good. If we get another petal in there and then do the length that the pattern says. So like ideally the pattern said to stop at this petal and then just keep going until you got the length. I think one more petal is gonna be ideal. So currently I've extended this, ver this section. So this section I did as is, I extended this section. Now I'm extending that section for the length. Um, so yeah, this has been a bit of a challenge, but boy, I really do like it. And it's like twirly. I think it's going to be really pretty. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. So, so that is where we're at with the skirt. So I want to add the last petal, basically the last petal. I'm on the last step. I'm just going to add this last petal. And then once you do that last petal, you just build it until you get the length you want. I think we're going to be good. I did give, I didn't mention in the video, I did give this a light steam before just to see if it stretched out a little bit. It will need to be like laid out and blocked just to even out everything but it's it, I'm feeling a lot better about this because it's been like a iffy project but I have the belt in 
obviously looks much nicer and it's inside out because you're working from the wrong side on this part but I have the belt in uh, the eye cord in so that looks much better um, it's easier to put on that way and yeah so that is that in other good news I did some ribbing today on my circular sock machine. So I managed to start the tube, load the rubber needles, do some ribbing, and then take out the rubber needles and go back to all cylinder stitches um, very shortly at the end. And then I just cast it off basically, but I got ribbing and it was, okay. So I, and I did make a mistake and I did actually make a mistake in here, but you can't, I can't even tell where it is. Like I probably could tell you if I keep looking, but I missed, yeah, I can't even, I can't even really tell. It's in there, but I missed a user error. So you have to like, I'm going to do some videos for sure. And they're not going to be like instructional videos because I am learning. So I am not instructing, but I will show you my process of how I'm doing things, especially on the true knit. Cause there's not a lot of true knit videos specifically out there. It's, they're all the same machine, but all the machines work just a hair differently and whatever. So it's good to just have the representation out there. Uh, but the way you load, you put the ribber on and then you load the needles and then you got to crank it some and load some more and crank it again until you get all the way around because the needles are constantly going, constantly going up and down and there's this big thing that's in the way. So I got to a point where I spun it a little too far and then there was one needle I couldn't get in. There was one rubber needle I couldn't get in so I just left the cylinder needle in there. So there was that one spot that there's, it's missing a rib needle. But then I I did like a round or two and then I put it back in. I'm like, oh, why don't I just put it in now? It's like when it was free. So then I put it back in so I could, but I can't even tell because it was like, again, it was like only one little spot. So if I had done this on a sock, it I really wouldn't have made it that big of a deal because I honestly cannot find it because it was like a row or two that's missing a ribbed spot. So I thought it would be more obvious, but it's really not. So that makes me happy too. But it was, once you got the flow of it, it's a time consuming process. You have to pull, literally pull out all the needle or every other needle. This is a one by one. Um, I don't know if you can see it over, I mean, you can obviously tell by the, the it sucks it in, but so, uh, and again, this is just scrap. So I'm just gonna wind, I didn't detach it from here. So I'm gonna wind it back up. So I need to look up how to do, I've only done ribbing once on a sock. For like the cuff part and you did you know you had to start it differently or do something different at the top because usually i do these rolled hems which is all it's all straight knitting but you then fold over the hem pick up the stitches and so it gives you this little cuff that's pretty much a folded folded over double brimmed little cuff so usually i do that um so i'm not sure what to do for ribbing anymore i did like, like i said i did one rib sock where I did just a little bit of ribbing. I'm sorry, that piano is bothering me, but I'm, because he's just messing around. Anyways, this is my life in the summer. It's very loud and obnoxious all day, every day. And I'm like, I'm, I just really can't wait for school to start at this point. Cause they used to go to day camp. So I like to, I'd have a couple days, like three days a week that I'd be alone. And that's when I would do my crafting and do these videos and stuff. But now, like, they don't ever leave. So anyways, um, so again, I apologize. I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly. This will be a short episode this week because, again, I didn't do a lot. I, but I did a lot of progress on that skirt, so I'm super happy with that. Um, and I will be working on my machine, machine more. I might even tool around with it today a little bit more. I don't know. I want to start crocheting on my skirt, too. Uh, next up will be my lotus top. So I do want to do that so I can have the complete outfit. And then I need to take glamour shots of my dispersed shawl, but I'm going to do that next week. I think I mentioned before the kids are going to camp, so I'm going to have the house to myself. So it's easier just to set up things and take pictures when there's nobody like coming in and out and like asking what I'm doing and I need to go find something and do something. So then, so anyways, rant over. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I will do some videos on the Trunet for sure. And yeah, I'll probably be focusing some, some more time on that. And hopefully I can get a ribbed sock. And there's another process. So usually you close the, you close the toe. You work a heel a certain way. And then if you work the toe the same way, then the seam is at the top of the toe where you have to kitchener. And then sometimes it just looks stupid because of the, um, the, where the, stripes end up especially so specifically in striping yarn so unless you do like a contrast 
toe, which I do do that a lot too. Um, but I want to try to do the toe where it folds in the back. So you basically, on the circular sock machine, you work a heel up here most of the time. And then that's where I work my toe because it's just, you know, like you're doing the same thing. Um, if you want to work the toe so that it closes on the underside and you don't see those weird, either you, if you do a bad Kitchener or if it's a weird stripe pattern in there, you won't see it because it's on the bottom. You work the toe on the backside of the machine. So that is something I'd like to try. Um, so that is what, because that's the what they recommend, like the, the sample sock she sent that I ended up sending to Andy the Nitrous came with the toe on the underside, like closing at the underside. So I'm like, eh, I should try that. It doesn't matter though, because honestly, I prefer, so um, when I use any sort of self-striping, I really prefer contrast because I really prefer the contrast on the heels as well. But this active yarn, it's like, it's so over patterned. It doesn't matter to me because it's like you it's too hard to even like figure out where the patterning starts and ends for me so i just do those in full socks and they always look fine because they're again it's just so mix matched and this weird fair oil stuff all over the place it just it ends up looking fine but sometimes you then get that one weird row that you end on with the toe and then or the heel and that kind of bothers me but again their socks are on my feet whatever I'm going to stop rambling. I am just excited about the progress this week. So I will take that as a W and um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good weekend. I hope everyone has a great week. I got some inflatable kayaks. So I'm hoping next week maybe to test one of those out. And yeah, if I do that, maybe I'll try to take a little vlog or something of that. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm just super excited for a week away from the kids. I love my kids dearly, but like, it's just going to be so nice to have a quiet house. So I am looking forward to that. Anyways, without further ado, I will say my farewells and I hope you have a great weekend and a great week and I will see you next week and I hope you get to craft all the things.